Hey guys, uh, this is a super complicated tutorial that uh, most people won't really need, but for those looking for PayPal adaptive payments, uh, you're definitely going to want to pay attention. So this uh, has been probably one of the most complicated things in my PHP career to learn, and so I'm sharing it with you today. Basically, adaptive payments is an API with PayPal that you don't have to pay for, it's completely free to use, and allows you to pay multiple people at once. Okay, adaptive payments. We're, there's many kinds of adaptive payments. Specifically, we're going to be using parallel payments, where multiple people get paid at the same time. So we're going to be uh, using their API with JSON. So let's uh, get started. I have pre-constructed some methods here that we're going to use. So here's our API. We're going to do this in the sandbox, by the way. So uh, before you even get started with code, you need a couple things. Uh, you need to go to x.com, make an account. And actually, even before there, you need to go to developer.paypal.com and set up a sandbox account with sandbox credentials. If you go to your API and payment credentials, you can see these here, and you just need to uh, use these details. Okay, we're, in a minute, we're going to need these details so that the username, password, and signature we're going to need. Then you go over to x.com and create an app. And after you've been approved for that app, then you get an app ID, which is this. And in this case, we're using the sandbox ID. And it's good to note that everybody's sandbox ID will be the same. Your sandbox app ID will be this exact one right here. They all use the same one. So, so PayPal sandbox to create your API account, and then uh, x.com to create your app key. Now, back to the code. This is the endpoint for the API. This is where we'll be making all of our sandbox calls. And then at the very end of this process, this is the URL that we will send the user to. So again, we're not paying for this service, so we actually send the user off to PayPal. We basically do a lot of work to prepare the payment, getting a pay key, and we send that pay key off with the URL to PayPal, which actually pays for multiple things. So let's get started. First things first, we are going to go over these methods. So we're going to have a get payment options method, a set payment details method. These are actually set get payment details. Well, they're called options. So, I'll, you know, what, I'll call it options. It's, it's what it's supposed to be called. So, basically, uh, these are API calls that we have to send to PayPal. And these basically set up invoices, invoice items. So, a, a normal parallel payment is done between multiple people, but you might be wanting to pay multiple people with a bunch of items in the order. And using set payment options and get payment options will be able to set that data. Uh, then we have create pay request. So when you start up a, pay, a adaptive payments, you have to create your pay request. So that's the first thing you do. And then, uh, and then after we do this, then we'll set payment options. And then each step of the way, we have to send stuff to PayPal over the secure connection. And so that's going to be using the PayPal send function we're going to write. Split pay is our function that we're going to kind of spin this all off on. And that's uh, where we're going to get started. So we're going to hard code everything. We're not going to use any variables. And that's just because... Uh, you know, easy to understand. So the first thing that we want to do is create a packet. We want to create a packet of data for our uh, uh, for our create pay request, right? That's the first thing is uh, create the pay request. So so we need to create uh, certain fields of information. So I'm going to call this the create packet, and that's going to be equal to an array. And let's talk about the fields that we need. We need an action type, which is going to be set to pay. This is all in the API if you want to read it for yourself. We need a currency code, which in this case is going to be for me, US dollars. And then we need a receiver list. Now, this is one of the parts that threw me. So re the receiver list is an array, which is array of receivers to get to have. Now this particular section, you're going to define and sum up all of the totals for each person. Even though in a minute we're going to break them down, you still have to specify the totals here. Okay? So we need uh, we're going to have an array of arrays. So each each uh, receiver will be an array. So array there, and uh, and actually that's not true yet. Not true yet. We first have to have a uh, receiver which is then going to be an array of arrays. So this is kind of why it's confusing and why I'm doing the video. Anyway, from there, we have our array of arrays. So here we'll have two receivers. Now, each receiver needs an amount and an email. 
So we need to have an amount. In this case, I'm going to fake this and do $1. And then we need an email. In this case, I'm going to use a, a d d constant I have in my system, which is called Chris PayPal, which is somebody's PayPal account. Don't worry about it. Now for the second one, I'm just going to do the same thing. Amount. This time I'll do like $2. And then I spelled amount wrong. That would ruin my life. Okay. Email. And I'm going to use my email, Sean, at squarebracket.com. Again, none of this is actually going to payment. So, receiver list receiver, which is an array of arrays, each one. Okay? That's the first thing you have to do. Now, keeping forward, after receiver list, make sure that's the right one. Yep. After receiver list, we now have a uh, return URL. And it's like that. And I'm just going to make that local.dev, which is just my testing environment, slash store, which doesn't exist. Don't worry about it. These have the, This is the URL upon success that they will be sent back to. The pay key will be appended. The cancel URL is if they go to PayPal and they cancel, they will end up here. Okay? That's the cancel URL. And finally, we need to have a request envelope which all the requests need to have, which I should extract this out even though I'm not going to. Envelope and request envelope basically specifies like the language and the type of uh, error return. So that's going to be an array of a couple parameters. First parameter is going to be our error language. So language, which is going to be English for me, so en underscore us. And then we need to have our detail level which I always return all detail because I'm debugging. So capital R, return all. OK, request envelope, boom. This is our packet. Now that we've gotten our packet, we are going to uh, send it off. Now, I wrote these methods up here uh, because I was breaking it out for you. But I'm really going to keep this all in the split pay function. So I know I might have confused you, but I'm actually not going to have this function. I'm going to do the call right here procedurally. So we have our packet, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to make an API call. So we're going to use our, our PayPal send function. So this underscore PayPal send, and we're going to send it our create packet. And then we need to send it a uh, an API call. And so here's our API up here. Here's our URL. But you actually have to have something at the end here. And you're either going to have pay or you're going to have um, like set payment details or something like that, right? So you have this different different kind of parameters there. So we're gonna we're gonna append this in a second, but for this, this is gonna be our pay, right? So PayPal send, create packet and pay, and it's actually capital P lowercase a Y. And this is going to be a response we're gonna get back and I will debug that response. Debug is a function that I wrote. It just kind of formats some debugging. So we have to write PayPal send. So let's go down to PayPal send, or up to PayPal send, I should say. So we're given data, and we're given a call. What does PayPal send have to do? PayPal send is going to be a curl request. So ch equals curl init. Boom. Now we're going to do curl set opt and ch. And I am going to copy this a bunch of times, because I need it, like five times. Yeah, it's fine. OK, the first parameter, and I'm going to copy and paste these, is the URL. The second one is going to be return transfer. So let's actually take these out as we go. The return URL is going to be our this API URL and dot the call, right? So we're calling the API, which is slash, and then the call. Return transfer is going to be true. And we need to disable SSL because this is sent over insecure. So dis curl opt SSL, we're going to set to false. And I'll, I'll put capital. I'll make this sure these are Booleans. Uh, true. OK, so SSL verify. And then we're going to verify host. And um, we're going to make sure that's false. That's the two steps required for SSL. And then we're going to basically set up our post fields. Uh, in this case, which is going to JSON encode our data. We have to send it as a JSON packet. And then last step is we actually need our HTTP headers. So I shouldn't have deleted that. That's OK. CH, curl opt headers. And that is going to be an array of headers. And I'm just going to put this headers because I'm going to write it in a minute. I haven't written it yet. The last step is to return JSON decode. So it's going to give us JSON back. We're going to decode it. We're going to curl exec our CH 
and we're going to pretty print that by passing true if I can type it correctly. Okay, so this is going to return a JSON decoded variable of our curl execution, and we're going to pretty print it so that, uh, I'm sorry, that's not what that does. <laughs> this true parameter makes it an associative array instead of an object. That's what that true parameter does. Now, what are this, this headers? So, in the constructor, we're going to always construct the headers each time, right? That's just a better way to do it. It's just easy. So, this headers equals array because we need the headers in multiple API calls. That's why I'm doing it. So and if we make an API call later with Ajax that we need these headers for, then that's fine. So these are headers for curl. Uh, we need a bunch of headers. And there's a misconception with the headers that's really confusing. And if you, here's a header. And in, in my opinion, I think that you would have to write this and write, uh, write the API user, right? I thought that's how you do it, but that's actually incorrect. Don't do it this way. That will destroy your life. You need to have a colon space and add that on, and, and that is the end of the first header. It's not an associative array. It is a single dimensional array of parameters, which is really confusing, and I will tell you what they are now. So we've got user ID. We've got Password. These are the form. These are the uh, fields that you saw in uh, in the back end that I was showing you. Then we have a request format, and we have, as you would expect, a response format. And I will paste the whole thing in here because I'm probably running out of time. And then we finally have our app ID, which again I've defined in some other wonderful location. So API user. So then we have API pass and API sig and then this is JSON and that's JSON so this is request response application ID boom 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 all colon separated there's our headers PayPal send function complete okay so now we have our send function we've got our headers we've got our payment let's see if we got any giant errors causing everything to not work. So we will go to split pay and refresh. And we get undefined constant Chris PayPal because I spelled it wrong. And that would be here. R I S Chris PayPal. Okay. And refresh. Okay, undefined variable response, because I spelled that wrong. Response. Boom. Okay. And refresh. Okay. Awesome. And so there's our success. We've cr successfully created a payment. Here's our pay key, and it says that we've been created. Awesome. Next step. Now we need to set our payment details. So set payment details. Again, I made a function for it. Oh my god. <laughs> Again, I made a function for it up here that I'm not going to use. I'm going to do it right below. I just did that because, uh, you know, showing you what we're doing. So. Set payment details is a similar packet request, although much more complicated. So I realize this went on super long, so check out the part two of this where we go over set payment details and actually test this all the way through till we're sending users to PayPal for split payments.